You caught me sleeping, but don't sleep on these second half sleepers. <laughs> Enjoy the show. We break down the news. Andy is on the floor. He wasn't expecting that. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. Hey, what's up, everybody? Chase Edmonds, running back, Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers back with you. Spectacular show in store. Oh, heck yeah, man. (laughs) We will... We'll be talking second half sleeper picks, which is a fun show. Each of us have a couple of guys that we think you should go acquire or expect big things from in the second half of the season. Yeah, guys that can turn it around. They've been asleep, and it's time to wake. Or maybe they haven't been completely asleep or need to turn around, just turn it up. Maybe they've just been like, they've been okay, but just you wait. That is correct. We're also going going over the <laughs> Thursday night preview Cardinals Packers game. Uh, you heard Chase Ed- Edmonds intro the show. Do you guys realize that Chase Edmonds is averaging five point eight a carry on the year through seven weeks? I need him to do more though. I mean, I think you he's need been... him to get more carries. Yeah, we, I would like some more fantasy points, Mister Edmonds. Does it help to know that he had the most attempts, rushing attempts of the year in his most recent game? Uh, did he have a great fantasy game? Yes. Then yes. He had, um, (laughs) he had 15 carries for 81 yards in the game. 5.4 a carry. Caught a pass just outside the top 24. So was that great? No. No. So 26. This yeah, pa- I mean, it's passable. I, 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 I mean, he's 22 on the year. I mean, I, I don't know what your expectations are there. Oh, look, we, the, this was a player before last week. We said that this week you want to trade for him. It's going to be a little, you know, that window is closing as they play on Thursday. But um, I do think Chase Edmonds he, he would be a good uh, qualifying player for today's episode. The Cardinals in general are, an, are a target for playoffs, fantasy playoffs. They played Detroit then at home against Indianapolis, and then they play Dallas. So those three games in a row for your fantasy playoffs, weeks 15, 16, and 17, are attractive, whether it's you know whoever you believe in there. If it's Edmonds, Connor, Kyler, Hopkins, I mean, the, the list goes on with the talented Arizona Cardinals. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have the Spotify Green Room show this afternoon. We if do. you have not joined us, we would love to have you. Uh, we do it live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. We've done it all year long. It's a good time. It's fun. Uh, you can hop on to the Spotify Green Room app. It is free and check that out. And then the current Megalobowl leader. We got to no. announce this. Me- Megalobowl leader. <laughs> can you read the name it's for sure, it? It's like you said, Megalobowl eater. Sure. Mm. I mean, I'm, he is eating up the competition right now. And uh, he being... Hindu 1974 he is 7 and 0 with 1175 fantasy points scored on the season. And if you have joined us after the beginning of the year the Megalo Bowl is our uh world record holding mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh I mean it's the largest claim- fantasy it yeah. is without a doubt verified by us by us with 10 to 20 minutes of looking that it is the largest fantasy league in existence, especially when you consider like act, you can trade. You you got waiver. It's how a many full people? Regular league. Uh, how many people? Fifteen thousand plus. People you know what you league? go with is you should go with voted number one. What does that mean? <laughs> I mean doesn't that sound great? <laughs> it sounds great. Voted I'm sure number it would one would be, but Guinness can't come and be like, no, you got the record for being voted number one. I, yeah. go- I googled is the Megalo Bowl the largest fantasy football tournament? I didn't see no. Okay, that's it's verified. Uh, let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. 
finally got the better of you two this past week. It's been a oh. while. Uh, we, you uh, sneaky snook. Mike and I sold Josh Jacobs as the top 10 running back. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. Uh, Michael Pittman, we all <laughs> bought five or more catches. Didn't expect the rain. He ended up with four. Uh, so we all lost that one. And then Ryan Tannehill, Jason and I sold him as a three or more total touchdowns against Kansas City, which he had one passing, one rushing. Yes, and someone else so on he, the team had a passing touchdown. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Although he had no rushing. Yeah. Um, buy or sell for week eight. These are wide receivers returning from the bipocalypse. Keenan Allen, is he a top 18 wide receiver against New England this week? I am smashing by. Oh. Smash. Well, hello. I have had to do some soul searching this week on my convictions around the Chargers versus New England. And I have chosen to throw my hat into the confidence area of the well, where do you equation? throw your hat? Equation. Yeah. Where you're at home, that's huge. Off the bye, that's huge. I think Keenan Allen is one of the players that um the ball hasn't bounced his way, so to speak, in terms of consistency thus far, but I will take him as a top eighteen. I I really like Keenan. Um, I going forward, he is a player I think worth targeting. We'll talk about him a little bit more. The line of eighteen against New England. Um, I'm going to sell right now. He's only done it once on the season, been in the top eighteen. Obviously, he has a long history of finishing in the top 18. If this was full PPR, I would say yes. But I think for him to get to that mark, he has to get a touchdown this week, which could happen, but I'm going to say he doesn't get a touchdown this week. I will sell the top 18. Uh, for what it's worth, New England currently 19th against fantasy running backs. Um, How about against wide receivers? Yeah. That's what I mean. There mm. you go. Yeah. All right. Now, the, uh, the, the age-old tale of Bill Belichick takes away your number one weapon. Yeah. Is that Mike Williams? Is that Mike Williams or is that Keenan Allen? Because you can't hyper focus the defense on both of them. And I think that to shut down the Chargers, it does start with what Mike Williams' role is in this offense. So I'm going to buy that Keenan Allen sneaks inside that top 18. I do like that narrative. All right, Chase Claypool, buy, sell, 70 or more receiving yards against Cleveland in Cleveland. He's hit that mark three of six weeks. I'm going to let you guys go first on this one since I jumped in early on the last I'll, one. I'm willing to go first on this one. This is a buy uh, for me. Chase Claypool is a is a good wide receiver. Uh, got a week to rest because uh, if we saw him two weeks ago when he was in a really good situation, did not come through, but he left in the first quarter with a – uh, with a little bit of an injury, came back and tried to play through it. So uh, with the week off and this matchup against Cleveland, I'm not I'm not very scared of of the Cleveland secondary with uh, what Chase Claypool can do. Yeah, I mean this this is a uh, you, whenever you're looking at Claypool, it's like it feels like a coin flip. He, he does he have a great game or does he kind of disappear? And I'm gonna bet on the talent. I think he is very very talented. Um, like you said off the bye, he had been dealing with you know from week four. Uh, the hamstring issue seems like he should be fully healthy with no juju. I'm going to bet on him having a, a a really good game. I will buy. Well, he's he was really, really talented the three weeks he didn't get 70 receiving yards as well. So I will sell it on the road just with Big Ben having – two weeks? Well, it says he hit the mark three of six weeks in our dock. Oh, well, that's incorrect. So, okay. Was it – No, that uh, that is correct. Mm, fight. Stat fight, he, but stat he, fight. But that's because he missed a week in week four. Yeah, he okay. did not hit the okay, mark. Okay, so we're counting games you did not play. In fact, I think we need to. I think we need to amend <laughs> it again. This? I think what we need to amend this? it again because he also did not hit it last week on by. So he has really not hit three seven. of seven weeks. Yeah, it's. Uh, this is it's trending in a terrible direction. I have to sell. <laughs> I will. I'm going to sell it. Uh, it equ what Claypool's situation equates to is Big Ben has to overcome his uh, desires to throw the ball underneath to Pat Fryer Oh, Sleuth. Or to Najee Harris or Deontay, Her uh, Deontay Johnson. And then they have to hit on that deep shot. It's not going to be 10 of them. Not going to be five of them. It's going to be he's got to hit on that deep shot, and he might. But I'll, I'll sell it just to be different from you two. And then Amari Cooper versus Minnesota, five or more receptions. Bye. 
I will Ooh. start first. So, um, <laughs> uh, obviously, wait your turn, Jason. Uh, Amari Cooper from weeks two through five had three receptions every single game. That was what he was doing. It wasn't that great. He obviously, we, we, we remember, he never missed time, but he was injured. Coming off the bye, I have to believe he's healthy. I think Minnesota is a good team. I think this is going to be a really exciting game. Um, it's indoors. There's no weather worries, and, and Amari Cooper is great. So I will bet on the talent and bye. How did he do during the bye week, though? Oh, he missed the mark again. <laughs> uh, five or more receptions against Minnesota. I will buy. I think he will get to five. Mm, well, that's an in sync. Bye, bye, bye. bye, bye. Yeah, thank you. Very nice. That was buy or sell. Brought to you by pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit on some sweet sports memorabilia. Brooksy, we're still giving away uh, Darren Waller jersey, aren't we? Darn right we are. Uh, FootClanGiveaway.com. It's free to enter if you want a shot at Darren Waller. Signed jersey up on your wall. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. I'm staring in Al's direction to see how he's doing emotionally because mm. <laughs> yesterday's waiver show did not time up well <laughs> because, uh, no, I mean, I guess it did for me because I didn't think you should spend anything on Alan Lazard, You're but I didn't prophet. know. I didn't know he was going to have COVID. So, uh, Alan Lazard also on the COVID-19 list, Devonte Adams, Alan Lazard, Seemingly the top two options for this offense are gone against the aforementioned Cardinals defense that has been uh, very, very good this year. I was sharing before the show, they've given up 5.3 points in the second halves of games. That's what they've averaged, given up per game. Um, and now you take away Adams, you take away Alan Lazard. You know, the, the, the natural reaction here is to turn towards three players. Aaron Jones, who you were starting anyway, and then Robert Tunyon and Randall Cobb, mm -hmm. because uh, otherwise you you could you could take a shot if MVS is activated. Which the comments yesterday we were laughing at, right? It was like, yeah, there's reason for some hope for him to be activated, and then you know Amari Rogers, Malik Taylor, uh, trail off here. Yeah, there's there's different options. I mean, it's it's really unfortunate the Cardinals so far this season have been very good against the run for fantasy purposes. They are number 3, so Aaron Jones, it's not a great matchup, but they're going to need him. Um they're number 1, I believe, against tight end. So it's like, okay, Robert Tunyon, they're going to oh, dang it, they've really not given up anything to that position. So that's where I do lean MBS. Um obviously he would have to be activated, which is another uh, layer. Yeah. The current expectation is that he will be activated, according to PFF's Doug uh, K, we'll say. The hard part for me with MVS is not that he's probably the, the highest upside of those players, is that he cannot come in in any way, shape, or form and do anything that Devontae Adams does in terms of volume. We've seen this team where MVS is the natural start in the past when Adams has missed games. And he has delivered zero times. So my concern is that you know Rodgers is not going to look to MBS for volume. And I'm curious where the volume is going to go. If he passes the ball 44 times against the Cardinals, how many of those are going to MBS? Seven? Six? Where's the rest of them going? Error to uh, Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And people, you know, coming into the week, people were very concerned about Aaron Jones. Hugely disappointing week last week where he was inefficient and not involved. So, you know, you're playing Aaron Jones, so there's no question marks there. But, Mike, do you agree? Where, where's your where's your dart throw in this game, Thursday night football? I mean, the dart throw to me would be probably Randall Cobb. Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, we're I guess we're, we're not fully in the Thursday night breakdown, but the, the question that's coming to my mind is, do you – do you pivot away from Aaron Rodgers? Uh, like that sounds like a uh, blasphemous thing to say. But, yes, but if. he's missing. He's missing his top two options in the passing game, and he's playing against a really strong defense, and he's on the road. Like this is a really tough situation for fantasy. Yes, if you could play Kirk Cousins this week, 
I'd play Kirk Cousins over Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, obviously it's going to depend on who your pivot option is. I will remind people. I know it seems outlandish and crazy, but in the seven games that he has, that Aaron Rodgers has played without Devontae Adams, he has actually scored more fantasy points than in the the last forty eight he's played with them. So, but in those games, did he also lose the like the number two wide receiver on the fair, chart? Fair. Minnesota. If you want to know what opposing quarterbacks have done against Arizona, Tannehill scored fifteen point two. Cousins scored 25, Lawrence was 9.5, Stafford was 20, you know. Uh, How did Davis Mills do? 3.4. <laughs> ah, yeah. Woof. So it's an option. I mean, it, it, you probably aren't going to want to do it. You're going to want to watch Thursday Night Football and just see Aaron Rodgers find a way. But um, it's just hard to imagine on prime time that, that Aaron Rodgers doesn't get it done in some way. I know that's not yeah. analytical, but it – like, I would just be surprised watching a primetime game and being like, oh, man, Aaron Rodgers sucked on primetime. Is that game still a six-point line? Six and a half now. Oh. Six and a half. Um, interesting. Yeah, I'd, you'd expect the Cardinals to be up, so Rodgers should have to throw the football. But we can, we, we're can. we supposed to preview that game later. I'm just falling out of order here. Um, the Houston Chronicle reported that the Dolphins and Texans have agreed to terms on a trade for Deshaun Watson. But – but the Dolphins would like clarity on his legal issues before going through with it. Which they can't get. I mean, that's impossible. There's no way you can have full clarity, right? You could have um, you could have clarity where you can make out the shapes. You know, enough of it. Certainly, if you're dealing with Watson and his lawyers and the NFL, you could, you could recognize what's going to happen probably before the November 2nd deadline. I, I don't think – maybe for this year – but I don't think long term. I mean, until the case and all the accusations, until everything plays out, you have you don't know. Is, you can't you can't ask his lawyer and say, "Hey, are you going to settle these?" And they say, "Yeah, we're going to settle them." That well, that's not clarity. But, but what about the criminal cases? He can't, you know. Yeah, you yeah you cannot settle those. And then it even if he, which he Watson has said he's he will not settle. Uh, at least that's what's been leaked out there. It, if he let's let's say that changes and he does. Then what does the NFL do? Do they do nothing, or does he get? Because I I don't believe it will be a zero game su suspension for him no, at that it's, point. It's well, the a, league has come out and basically says nothing. I mean, Roger Goodell has come out and basically the the league seems like it's transformed the way it's handling these in the last couple of years, which I'm not saying is a good thing. But between the Washington football scandal and their seemingly protection of Dan Snyder, and then this situation where you know, you you've their hand hasn't been forced yet with this situation. Yeah, I feel like they came out and said enough to know that he's not going to go on the commissioner's exempt list if he's traded right now. Not until new information comes to light, because they basically said as of now they don't have enough information to put him on there. He's only waived his no trade clause for Miami as of right now, so that fits with the trade. Uh, you know, I don't know what you do at this point. November second is the deadline, so. If they can't get the clarity they want, then this is going to be an off-season discussion and we can stop talking about it. Uh, the Antonio Brown situation is not looking great. No. Isn't practicing again on Wednesday. Was, quote, leaning on a crutch. I mean, that doesn't sound good. No. I, I've never seen a player play. Well, like, but one? Was he like uh, Tiny Tim from... <laughs> from a Christmas carol? That's exactly what it was. It was a wooden crutch as well. <laughs> and Timio? Yeah. Um, no, the, yeah, you don't usually see a player play with a crutch, so I would imagine if he's got to use one right now, probably not going to play this week. If anyone could do it, though, it would probably be Antonio Brown. Rob Gronkowski returned to practice Wednesday. Might be a limited return. Not sure about the final there yet. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> you you want to cover the Giants news, Mike? Uh, sure. Let's see. We got, uh, right now we're hearing there's less than 50% chance that, uh, Barkley, Shepard, Tony, and Galladay will be playing. Okay. So, Gross. yeah, I mean, that's, if they're not playing, then you're back to the well with Darius Slayton, who was five for 63 last Which, week. Slayton's, Slayton's a fine player. And you can dart throw, uh, historical temporary, my guy, <laughs> Dante <Superstar>. Pettis. <laughs> He is the first temporary my guy that we've ever had. Yeah, well, first and only. Yeah, yeah. It was like he was walking up to the stage at one of those award shows, and then as he got to the first step, they're like, "Turn around, 
Turn around. Yeah. Go I back read, to your I, seat. I read it wrong. Well, it's like when the uh, in the Oscars when they read the, the wrong movie. Oh my gosh, did, they did do that. Didn't yes, they? Oh, Dante P- <laughs> S- P- Pettis did not win. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, Baker Mayfield possible that he plays in Week Eight against the Steelers. I mean, okay. your season is starting to become threatened by the injuries. So having him that back. Sucks. You does know. it change much for you and your outlook for any of the other Browns? Do it you? really does. Really? Yeah, and it, and last week had you asked me that before the game where I got to watch Case Keenum play football. Uh, like, my opinion of their ceiling changed in watching Keenum attempt to execute the offense. Not that he's incapable, but it was evident to me that they wanted to take the ball out of his hands more than they would Baker. So, um, yeah, it, it does affect the ceiling for me. Okay. Nick Chubb hopes to play. He's going to see how his calf injury responds. I think right now the expectation is he will play. Is that yeah, right? I would agree. All right, that's it for News and Notes. Brought to you by our great friends at Sleeper, the Sleeper app, the leader in breaking news alerts. Can't get enough news. Can't get enough news? Can't, Can't get, enough get enough news. news. Before we get into the second half, Sleepers want to thank today's sponsors. Policy Genius is out there. You can protect your property from mischief this spooky season oh. with the right home and auto coverage. Sometimes you, you look at your auto insurance, you're like, oh my word, I'm spinning how much? Well, look, Policy Genius makes it easy to compare home and auto insurance in one Heavens place. Heavens to Betsy. <laughs> oh, my word, what's happening with my prices? <laughs> they have saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. They've saved new customers an average of 435 bucks on auto insurance. They've saved new customers an average of 350 bucks per year on home insurance. Getting started is easy. First, head to Policy Genius dot com slash footballers answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property then boom bam policy genius takes it from there they will compare america's top insurers from progressive to all state to find your lowest quotes head to policy dot com slash footballers to get started right now policy genius when it comes to insurance it's just nice to get it right policy dot com slash footballers also i'm really excited to tell people about uh, a new sponsor supporting the show because it is something I am passionate about, and that is coffee. And we want to thank Trade Coffee for supporting you the show. You are a coffee man. It is uh, It is hard to imagine my life without coffee-based routines. A true connoisseur. And um, what's really neat is we've, we've talked about other things, like there's been wine companies that kind of mm. curate things for you. Look, if you are a, a, a coffee newbie or you're a certified coffee nerd like myself, you got to hear about Trade Coffee. Um, because look at home coffee, a lot of the times it does not live up to expectations and trade coffee does something really, really cool. They give you a coffee quiz. They ask you how you like your coffee. Are you a French press person, an automatic drip, a cold brew, which I know you love Jason. I do. And then they will match you with one of 400 plus craft coffees from around, uh, the country and they will like send it to you and then. If you like it and rate it, they'll send you a different bag. You get to try. Trying different coffees is a lot of fun. So uh, for our listeners right now, Trade is offering your first bag free. That's awesome. And $5 off your bundle at checkout. To get yours, go to drinktrade.com slash footballers and use the promo code footballers. Take the quiz. Start your journey to the perfect cup of coffee. That's drinktrade.com slash footballers, promo code footballers for your first bag free. And five dollars off your bundle. Enjoy. You know who would love that? Um, Cooper Cup. Mm. I guess it ties in with sleepers too. Cooper they could wake coffee. up, right? Oh, yeah, wake up. Second half sleepers. I like that. That was. That was I liked it a lot. Man, we do good work. Uh, good work, team. Mike does. Mike does good work. All right. It's my team. Second half sleepers, we each wanted to identify a couple of names. And look, I want I want this to be a spirited debate. So if you guys disagree with any of my picks or vice versa, let's let's bring that to the forefront why we see the narrative maybe not playing out the way that the other one believes. But my first name is Keenan Allen. We talked about him earlier in the show briefly. 
But Keenan Allen is the wide receiver 35 right now. That's nonsense. He's not going to finish as the wide receiver 35. And is that on the basis of the fact he's finished 3rd, 12th, 8th, and 14th the last four years? That is part of the basis. Does anybody think that Justin Herbert's not playing better football now than he was last year? I think he's very good at quarterback. So there is an opportunity here where the Chargers ranked 1st in neutral game pace, 3rd in pass rate over expectation. Herbert has leveled up. The team is going to be competing long into the season. They have what I think is a very – nice uh playoff schedule and so uh to me Keenan Allen is a, is a trade target uh he's still seeing 9.7 targets per game he's on pace for 164 targets and yet through seven weeks it's just kind of not bounced his way because he only has one touchdown so Mike Williams is stealing them all yeah it's not going to stay with the you know the pendulum swung so far in the Mike Williams direction uh, his expectation right now would be the wide receiver 11 in fantasy points per game based on targets. And he's sitting at, you know, 29 to 35, depending on your scoring system. So for me, touchdown turnaround, targets keep coming, and you're going to end up in, in a good place if you trade for him now. Yeah, I, I, I agree with this one. I don't really have any bone to pick with the fact that no. Keenan Allen is – you know, you, you just look at situations. I, I kind of um, I see this somewhat similar to Amari Cooper, um, where it's like, is the player really good? Yes. Is the offense really good? Yes. Is the quarterback really good? Yes. Are they going to finish the season better than where they're at right now? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you just kind of bet on the big, obvious things. And if the metrics and the touchdowns and the yardage hasn't happened yet, that's where I want to place the majority of my bets as a player like Keenan Allen. He's averaging six and a half and seventy. Like that's I I understand that he's technically the you know whatever the wide receiver thirty five thirty four in in a half point scoring format, but those are strong numbers. He's not nothing's changed he's not with Keenan. Killing you. One of the things you have to remember with Keenan is he's had these years where he just has stretches of just dominance. Just mm -hmm. And it, that hasn't happened yet. So if it's going to happen, it's going to happen from here on out. Um, I think Keenan is a much safer pick. But the pick that I'm going with for my first second half sleeper is more exciting and I think potentially more important if it hits. It's Javante Williams, the rookie running back for the Denver Broncos, he has split the work. We've talked over and over about how the, the workload is not split like, you know, between him and Melvin Gordon. It is you you broke that cookie in half. Right. And you saw the one side was a little too big and you cut that little sliver off and you gave it back. It is a perfect replica. It's like they want to make sure that these two guys are even. And that's what's happened so far. And so we just assume, well, then that's what they're doing the whole year. But the reality is Melvin Gordon's not a part of this team's future. Javante Williams is the team's future, and Javante Williams has been awesome. Um, now, he hasn't been awesome for fantasy yet, right, because he's splitting 50-50. He's averaging 4.6 yards per carry through the first seven games. Over the last five years, that would be one out of only 10 rookies that have hit that, including Saquon, Kareem Hunt, Josh Jacobs, Dalvin Cook, Alvin, uh, Aaron Jones. So it just shows, like, on a per-touch basis, he's been really, really effective. Um, that's better per-touch. Um, then rookie Jonathan Taylor, rookie Joe Mixon, rookie Najee Harris. So the question is, will the opportunity come? Well, the opportunity has been coming more and more in the passing game. He's got three receptions um, in five straight games. He had six catches last week against Cleveland. And if you go back to the 10 things to remember episode way back in February, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Maybe you heard of him. He's, I have. He said, He's not the fantasy pitman. Right now? Well, right now he is the fancy pit man. Uh, not not, not like, armpit man. No, it's oh. not your armpit. You're the oh. fancy Michael Pitt man. Pity City. Come on, man. Um, no, the uh, his, his quote is he's it's better to be a few weeks early on the rookie running back than too late. We saw it last year with um, several of them, Dobbins, Cam Akers. Like, these guys at Jonathan, the, Taylor. Jonathan Taylor, these guys – in their rookie season, you know, you've brought it up a lot, Andy. Kyle Pitts and and these rookies are getting get more and more involved, gain more trust, not just from the quarterback, but from the head coach. And here's the best part. You want to know who has the number one easiest running back schedule from weeks 10 through 17? Pretty much the rest of the way, it is the Denver 
Broncos. After the Week 11 bye, the Chargers, the Chiefs, the Lions, I think his talent mixed with his the fact that he's a rookie, mixed with his schedule, he, to me, has the potential to have a ma major breakout. He'd be someone I'd be targeting before your league's trade deadline right now, before any volume changes. I am so wanting to be in on all of that. I have this is like get in the pool and I have like the I've taken the towel off I've come to the edge my toes are maybe over the edge and I am waiting to jump and the only thing stopping me is I look down in the pool and Melvin Vic, Gordon's there. Vic, Vic, Vic Fangio's looking up at me and Pat Shermer <laughs> just, just submerged just submerged under the water <laughs> Pat Shermer like the only problem gonna come up for air <laughs> no they're just staring yeah. and it's not a pretty sight that's my only fear. My only I, fear is that, you know, two things. That, having confidence that they will make the decision, the, the, the logical, rational coaching decision to look to the future, combined with Melvin Gordon being good, not as good, but good this year, mm -hmm. relative. And I hope that we are talking about a Swift, Dobbins, Akers, JTT situation. We should be. We should be, but we may not be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you definitely – But you not said be, it, risk, a little riskier it, than the other It is pick. certainly not a given that he gets the workload and has a great you know, time from here on out. But I do think and – and I'm glad that your quote was it's better to be a couple weeks too early because if I trade for Javante Williams now or next week before your league's trade deadline, I don't think it's going to be right away. But yeah, I, I agree. The week 11 bye from then on out, I think he's going to re – he's going to be a weekly starter who if – gets the opportunity can can win passing game wins. work is interesting especially yes. with it kind of ramping up in this last game more and more trust yeah it's I, i'm in on this i've been in on javante you know the whole off season and, and at the beginning it is it definitely carries risk and the the manager that drafted javante williams it it will be interesting what the, the the sentiment is out there because there's going to be a lot of people that drafted him who are like yep, impatient. Now. I'm waiting. I'm I'm just going to sit and I'm going to wait for Javante Williams to break out. But then there will be those fantasy players that are just at this point nearly halfway through the season like ah this it's never going to happen. Uh, it, it's it's difficult to see these things happening until they happen. And speaking of not going to happen. <laughs> You're out on this one? No, no. I oh. are on yours? Yeah. Maybe. All right. Well, uh yeah, I'm doubling down here and a quarterback that I think you want to go get right now. You don't need to bet anymore, Mike. I I don't. You already made a big bet. <laughs> oh, but I'm <sighs> Take my money. Double down, man. I drew I I've been, I've been handed the 11 at the blackjack table <laughs> yep. and I am doubling down. Trey Lance, quarterback for the 49ers. Uh, we, we've already, we have the proof that he is fantasy viable. I get it that in his one start, it didn't, it wasn't like, oh, it was an absolute smash success, but he was literally a yard away from, uh, scoring a rushing touchdown. He, it was an incredible play by the Cardinals defense. He got stonewalled at the goal line. And if he gets in right there, then he's, he's a top 12 quarterback on that week. He said in one and a half games played 21 carries. For Trey Lance, he's going to run. He's going to run a ton. Debo, it, it will be his number one option in the passing game. And even Kyle Shanahan, I get what he's saying of he doesn't want to turn it over yet to Trey Lance, but the 49ers are currently 2-4. and four. Can, they, can they beat Chicago this week without Khalil Mack? Yes, they can. Will they? It's, will they? I don't know, but, it's, but they definitely can. But after that, Arizona, the Los Angeles Rams, there's two incredibly difficult matchups, followed by Jacksonville. They should handle that. But then Minnesota and Seattle with Russell Wilson back, the Cincinnati Bengals. Like you have what looks like a lot of potential losses here. And I'm I'm these are second half. Like I'm not saying Trey Lance is coming in next week and turning into your uh, your, your fantasy savior at the quarterback position. I'm saying that sooner than later the team will turn over to him, and then we're looking at the playoffs. Atlanta, Tennessee, Houston. Those are the three playoff weeks for the San Francisco 49ers and Trey Lance. He is not heavily rostered. Brooks, you just gave me a, a roster percent. 35. 35. So you can get him off of the waiver wire right now 
and it, maybe you want to wait. But I just I do truly believe that those last three weeks, the people that have held on to Trey Lance or picked him up just in time are going to be sitting on an absolute fantasy gold mine at the quarterback position for the players that don't have Lamar, Kyler, like those top end guys. And you're if you're looking to to juice up your position for the playoffs. Trey Lance is your guy. So I was kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit in, a little bit out as well on this one. I, I don't think it's a guarantee that it it happens this year, but this, I mean, right now the, the Niners, the only two teams they've beat is the Detroit Lions and the Philadelphia Eagles. So, yeah, I mean, if they keep losing games, there will be, a, you know, a commotion to get uh, Trey Lance involved. But what you said at the end is is for certain certain managers who have specific quarterbacks, you don't have one of those guys. Right. I have Jalen Hurts. It is so scary. I am. Sure. So, I am. I am Jesse from Saved by the Bell because <laughs> I am so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so scared because one of these days he's going to get pinched for Gardner Minshew. Yeah, they've they've already talked about Gardner. I, I mean, I you know because he because he sucks, um, <laughs> but he's so good for fantasy. So it's like I just want like another option for if that change happens. So he, Trey Lance might be a nice compliment to a Jalen Hurts. Can I prescribe a middle ground? Sure. You can hear this as sign Trey Lance right now, or you can hear this as when and if, if and when Trey Lance takes over, he's great and is worth a bunch of fab. Sure. Because yeah. you don't have to take the route of like, Holding him for weeks. Yeah, on you, him. you. What you can do is you could take like here's what's going to happen when he gets announced. He will be in demand, but that demand may be severely diminished compared to what it was earlier in the year. Could especially be, especially with a game of not great fantasy production. So you could take the advice as, you know, when when the gun gets fired, make sure you're off the line first and you spend up on him because the upside might be worth it for those three playoff games. Because there isn't there's a scenario where those are the that's the Trey Lance story for 2021 is the Trey Lance story is some people signed him right before these three playoff games when San Francisco was eliminated and they wanted to give him his shot before being the starter next year and that's his whole story is three games yeah and it's not it's not bad advice to to just say maybe this is a wait and see and then pay up because you brought up the schedule's hard, right? Like maybe yeah. when that transition is made is coming up against Arizona or coming up against the Rams. And are people really going to be clamoring to grab him off the waivers and play him? You're you're probably you, you know if it's a tough matchup, you might not have to spend a ton to get him on your waivers. All right, uh, let me ask you a quick question: San Francisco's two and four, the Seattle Seahawks are two and five. Which team is more likely to battle back and make the playoffs? Ooh, uh, I, oh man! I think that uh, the more likely team is the Seahawks because I think they'll get Russell Wilson back um, in a couple weeks, and once he's back, they're good. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. Okay, um, let's go to our second pick, and I, with a little bit of hesitation and trepidation, and yet. I will move forward with him. Julio Jones is my second second half sleeper. Um, he is the wide receiver 67 right now, so I believe he could be acquired on the super cheap. All you got to do is wrap up his current production with his current hamstring, and you've got a compelling argument to get him on a discount. And I'm talking about you can probably get him for Marvin Jones. You could probably get him for sure. Christian Kirk after a good week. I mean, there there are some trades out there that are possible. And here's why I think you should look his direction. He leads the Titans team in yards per route run. He has the same average depth of target as A.J. Brown. He's being targeted on 21% of his routes. And his schedule, you know, they have the fifth best wide receiver schedule from weeks 12 through 17. So the important weeks of your season. And I think that Julio's physically able to give you a an A.J. Brown game two, three times during that stretch at a non-A.J. Brown price. Sure. At, at, and so, you know, the play-action game, the Derrick Henry, the Yeti effect, the Ryan Tannehill, what we've seen, you do have a temp... You have all the pieces around Julio that you know, right? They're all predictable. And so his health has to be there. But it might be worth a gamble right now. 
And so this was a player that I, I kind of threw in here yesterday, and then I went back to the drawing board, and I go, well, maybe I'll go Elijah Mitchell for a second-half sleeper. Or maybe maybe I'll look at Will Fuller and think a trade's going to – and then I came back to Julio when I saw the schedule, and I came back to Julio because of my eyeballs telling me that, you know, on the plays he's made, he's looked like the same guy. Mm -hmm. So I think that Tannehill's – it's not the same as a rookie, but your trust in a player on certain plays increases with your dura – they've had no time together. Because of the injury. So I think Julio at wide receiver 67 is not where he's going to end up. And he might be worth a um, a, a shot. No, I, I, I like that a lot. Um, you know, I think Ryan Tannehill has a good stretch ahead of him. Um, Julio, I agree with you completely on the eyeball test. Uh, it's funny because he has been completely outclassed from A.J. Green. A lot of comparisons based on age and caliber and Hall of Fame, you know, uh, status. Uh, but the the eyeball test is has been good with Julio, and the longer that he gets removed from the hamstring injury, uh, the better, the more snaps that you know he'll be able to play and get out there. I I don't have any problems with that. You do you have anything disagreeing? No, think? I I like I like taking the chance. I mean these are these aren't called uh, second half. I guarantee that these players <laughs> are going guarantees. to hit. Yeah, these, these are players that like that are discounted currently because of what has happened over the the course of the the first half of the season all right well let's talk about a real sleeper someone that uh, plenty of people will disagree with uh, maybe both of you will disagree with, maybe i disagree with it but i just traded for him in the oh, listener did, league did, remember i did not remember that um it's henry ruggs uh, henry ruggs uh second year wide receiver for the las vegas raiders i think has a chance to really have a special second half of the year. Now, Waller's currently hurt, and they're, they're on bye right now, so Ruggs is probably on your waivers. Um, if he's not on your waivers, you can get him for nothing. Um, here's the reality. is like So Darren Waller dealt with the ankle, missed this last game, um, and this is probably good news for Waller that it's coming up on his bye week, but here's what's the reality. is like They lost John Gruden. They have a, a somewhat new identity, a new coach, and while they have their bye week to kind of figure out who they are and how they are going to be going forward, Darren Waller's not there. So they're, they're, getting, they're getting the opportunity to really involve these wide receivers uh, more into the game plan because obviously beginning of the season it was all Waller. And when I look around the league and we, t we look at the greatest tight ends, and you look at uh, Travis Kelsey, and you got the speedster in Tyreek Hill, and it's the one-two punch. And you look at Mark Andrews, and you got the speedster Hollywood. It's been the one-two punch. And you kind of have that formula. Here you have Darren Waller, and you've got the speedster in Henry Ruggs, who's only a second-year wide receiver, has looked pretty good this year. Um, he has the fifth-highest average depth of targets, 17.2 among wide receivers, the sixth-most deep targets. And honestly, Derek Carr's been playing great. When you combine all of that and you look at the fact they have the third best schedule for wide receivers from weeks 10 through 17, I think he is a sleeper that has a shot to become more relevant and have a lot of big game-breaking plays that, that help you for fantasy. So if you're um, in a league where you're just you're looking at the waiver wire and you're wanting to take a shot at someone that could be special as opposed to a Jamison Crowder that could come in and get you a few points – I think Ruggs is where I would look. Derek Carr has been playing outstanding football. Um, I have no problem with the sleeper pick of Ruggs. I mean, he, yeah. his draft capital combined with you know talent, opportunity, this team probably being in the mix for the remainder of the year. Thus far, I mean, he's needed to give you that big play. But mm -hmm. when you think of players in the NFL right now, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my lot in with Henry Ruggs over McCole Hardman. You know, every every single week, so I, I don't mind it. I like it. Yeah, it's. I mean, he's the second best wide receiver on the team, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, <laughs> Brian Edwards. He's he's gonna forever, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna close out this segment with my second second half sleeper. And granted, this is a player I at in draft season I was concerned about. I wasn't fully in on, but. Washington, the Washington football team, Logan Thomas is injured. He might be on your waiver wire, and he could be incredibly cheap to trade for right now. And here is the scenario for him. After the bye week, hopefully he's good to go. We have a quote from Rivera just a day ago, day ago saying, Logan Thomas should be back sooner than later. So this isn't like a we're concerned. And their bye week is next week. So correct. They play this week. He's not going to be there. Then a bye week. That is correct. So sooner than later in fantasy football terms, Logan Thomas will be back. And, I mean, he was 
he he's on the field a ton. Ricky Seals Jones is filling in admirably for uh, Logan Thomas, but I think once Logan's back, the role goes to him. The schedule is so favorable for the tight end position for Washington. Eight of the re remaining ten matchups are plus matchups for him after the bye week, and then the the playoffs: Philadelphia, Dallas, Philadelphia. Logan Thomas, in his three games played, I'm not counting the injury game, but so he's played in three games. He was top 12 in two of those three games. So if you, again, like Trey Lance, where I'm looking to shore up my quarterback position and I feel like I can't go get Mahomes, Kyle, I can't get the superstars. At tight end, I can't get Waller, I can't get Kelsey, I can't get Mark Andrews and these guys. Logan Thomas could turn into one of these waiver wire streaming guys that while he's not... I'm not saying Logan Thomas is, is uh, going to burn it down for you and be a, a league-winning tight end, but I'm saying he could shore up your position and be someone that you just put in there every single week and you're good to go. This is my favorite of our second uh, picks. I, th I think is, this makes so much sense. They, they just signed him to a three-year, $24 million deal. Yes, he's, he's their guy. He's the dude. Ricky Seals-Jones is the backup. Who uh, Ricky Seals-Jones is the proof. That Logan Thomas is going to be good because they're using him nonstop, and Logan Thomas was was I, I mean, and it's perfect for this injury. He's got a hamstring injury. They place him on the IR. He gets three weeks, but because of where the bye week is, if he misses the fourth, which he's going to miss this week, he gets a fifth, mm -hmm. and so he should be coming back healthy with plus matchups and and uh, being necessary to the team. I I really like this for a, a tight end needy team. If you're streaming the tight end position, you do need to shore it up before the end of the year. You mm -hmm. can't be. Like Brooks just did this in our dynasty league. He he traded a couple of later draft picks and he picked up Dalton Schultz. His team had a hurt George Kittle and not much else. And so he's preparing for a playoff run. He wants somebody he can put in the lineup every week. And I think Logan Thomas does represent that. So Thursday night breakdown. The Green Bay Packers, 6 and 1, six straight wins, taking on the Arizona Cardinals in Arizona. They also have six straight wins. And seven. Oh uh, yeah. The DraftKings sportsbook line Cardinals minus 6 and a half, the over under is 50 and a half. And um look, we're in a dome so we won't be rained on again in primetime. Uh the Cardinals have a 28 and a half point implied point total. Packers at 22 right now. Um for those of you out there betting the game, the Packers have covered the spread in six straight, but it's going to be it's gonna interesting because yeah. it's the Cardinals have covered in six of seven. So um, something's got to give there. Kyler Murray and company, they have been rolling. It has been a an offense predicated on spreading the ball around, whether it's Hopkins, Green, Kirk, Moore. I mean, look, we haven't talked about Randall, Rondell Moore in a couple of weeks. Because it's been somebody else's story, so and that might not even be the player that hurts you. No, it could oh, be hurts. Oh, uh, oh. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Zach. Or, let me. Who wouldn't you start on Arizona? Are you starting both running backs against Green Bay? I would. I would be hesitant to start James Conner in this game. Last game, you saw the kind of uh, lead back role go, go more to. Um, Chase Edmonds, and I think that this is a, I, I still believe that Aaron Rodgers gets it done. Like that's I I'm not going to bet against Aaron Rodgers in prime time against a good team. I, what does all, gets it done mean? Gets it done means scores enough to where the game has to stay competitive, and you're not in a situation where the Cardinals are uh, trying to protect a, a, a three possession lead. You know the way that they've seen in some of these uh, recent games against Cleveland, against um, the Texans. So. They're going to need to continue to put pressure on and score more points, they being the Arizona Cardinals, and and that means Chase Edmonds catching the ball out of the backfield, um, being efficient against a Green Bay Packers uh, defense that over the last two years has not been great against the run. Yeah, it'll be a tall task for Rodgers in this one. Chandler Jones returns after a two-game absence to add to the pass rush. Same with Zach Allen, who's been a part of the pass rush. With J.J. Watt and Marcus Golden, uh, you're you're going if he gets it done, he's going to have to get it done some, with with other players. I mean, he's not going to run his way to victory. So it's going to be Aaron Jones. Yeah, we know he's in your lineup, but you're going to have to decide if you want to take a shot on Robert Tunyon this week as a as a 
streaming tight end option after a good week last week. The most slot snaps of the season, four for 63 and one. Um, look, I'll play him over chasing Uzama's points against the Jets. I will. Uh, I'll play him over Conklin. I'll play him over. I think it gets tougher with Ricky Seals Jones. I'd play Ricky. Yeah. I, the, the Uzama is interesting to me, but I, I would agree. Robert Tunyon is, is, is necessary in this matchup. Again, it is a terrible Dude, matchup for him. So bad. He's been bad and it's such a bad matchup. The Cardinals have not let anything happen. The Cardinals are averaging, giving up 3.9 fantasy points per game to all tight ends on the opposing team. So it's like it, I keep wanting to smash Tunyon in, you know, like uh, the the DraftKings showdown or um, look at him in, in, you know, certain waiver wires I've seen him and I'm like, Ugh, I just have a hard time. Because five of seven games, Robert Tunyon has 10 or fewer receiving yards. Five of seven. If, if this game was – because this is a tough thing to do every year when you see defenses change, right? Like Washington's defense and the historically great Patriots defense. If this is Green Bay without Adams and Lazard up in Foxborough and the Patriots defense was ranked number one in the league, are you looking at it the exact same way you're looking at this game? The Cardinals defense is number one in the league. They're at home on prime time. They have all of their defensive players back in the fold and healthy. Do we is the hometown bias actually working against us here where we still are waiting for the shoe to drop in Arizona to be a disaster? I, I, th I think they're for real and I, I'm trying to pivot away from all Packer options. Uh, I mean, not Aaron Jones and maybe, maybe Rogers, but I would, I'm, I think I'm with Jason that I would probably just put, put him in and take that risk. But Robert Tunyon is, he's out for me. So I, I just looked this up because obviously Robert Tunyon had a great year last year, and we talked. I, I brought up the stat of um, Rodgers had better games without Aaron Rodgers I, or without uh, Devontae Adams last year. In the two games that they did not have Devontae Adams, Robert Tunyon was a monster. Uh, he, you know, had he averaged two touchdowns in those two games. Sure. Uh, four touchdowns across those two opportunities, 25 fantasy points a game. So he did – we have seen him become a little bit more of of a go-to, five and a half receptions per game in those two. So it, it's really just a matter of, yeah, what do you believe? Is Are the car – I think you outlaid it really well, Andy. Like, you at home have to decide, do you think the Cardinals are – fully fully legit and great and they are just going to continue locking people down because they have so far and now there's bad vibes and missing players for the Packers um you know the 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 Browns looked like they were great right and then they had a couple injuries and then they got smashed by the Cardinals what was that smashed I like that but I think you're 100 percent right I have a hard time not waiting for the Arizona Cardinals to suck here yeah because I mean, they... of because of our personal experience of pain <laughs> and i think i think our choice to doubt them has worked out well for us yeah so i want to continue that but right. no yes. i mean they they beat tennessee on the road when they had a healthy you know couple of wide receivers and they they slowed them down so um if i think i was being objective i would look at this game with the way that the vibes are trending and i would believe arizona handles green bay pretty well in this game um which means that you can do the dance at wide receiver. You can play Hopkins, of course, and he'll be. You're going to see him listed as a game time decision, and then he's going to play in the game. There's zero percent chance that DeAndre Hopkins misses this game. I'll go on record. Okay. Uh, AJ Green, Christian Kirk, and Rondale Moore. Green is going to get his six targets. Christian Kirk is going to get his shot at a big play, but Rondale Moore is on my bench. The other two, I'm yeah. willing to. I'm willing to. Yeah. Play. At this point, the the Rondale Moore opportunities aren't where they need to be on, on a weekly basis especially and, picking up Zach Ertz in trade yes, and that, knowing he's going to be a part of the offense yeah that that affects the breakout for sure but and uh I'm on the other side though for James Conner than with Jason I would I'm willing to play him he has he has the fifth most attempts inside the 10 at the running back or of, of all carries like they're they're scoring a lot they're looking to him in those those high value opportunities so uh you're it I'm not expecting 102 from James Conner, but if you get 40 
and a touchdown, that's that's still flex worthy. And and don't do anything with AJ Dillon. I mean, th- this is he had a disastrous game that doesn't represent his entire future. But two fumbles and five opportunities, bench him or cut him if you need to start somebody else. Yeah, I I would uh, I would agree with that. And and I'm going on the record. I, obviously, Ertz is a great start here. He's he's uh-huh. going to be involved. But I'll, I'll go on the record. I I've decided I am in on Robert Tunyon. He's okay. he's a low end. Tight end one that I've kind of been sitting over there, kind of like with a. <laughs> I'm, I'm. You've been deep in thought, like you're, I, you're meditating and just Tunyon focused. Yeah, I, the, and you, 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 you see me. Yeah. Um. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think Robert Tunyon has an okay game here. Uh, if you are a podcast listener of this show, I want to encourage you this week to go to YouTube.com/slash The Fantasy Footballers because on Friday we have our annual Ooh. Halloween episode. And it is going to be a good time, and we are going to look ridiculous. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you can make your guesses in the uh, the comments or on Twitter at the FF Ballers of who you think we will dress up as. I have seen some of these guesses, and I will say some of them have been dead right. <laughs> um, but I think you'll also be surprised, and it'll be a good time. So uh, Halloween show on Friday. Tomorrow we will be getting into... All of the matchups for the upcoming week, our starts of the week on tomorrow's show as well. And mercifully for Al Borland, we don't have to talk about his Packers anymore. Are you feeling oh, excited yeah. about that? We Al? will on Friday, though. Well, and we're all going to the game together. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Al won't if be here. If anybody's seen Friday. that picture of Jason at the Suns game, that might be my posture <laughs> tomorrow night. Oh, my gosh. Might I recommend stretchy pants? <laughs> That's true. That's true. If you don't know what we're talking about, yeah, we will be at the uh, Cardinals Packers Thursday night game in person with all Cardinal fans except for one here in the studio. It's time to give up. You live here now, Al. Never. We're, we're going to the Super Never Bowl. give up. Never surrender. All right. That'll do it for today's show. See Thank you, you in for Green Room. In. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.